We're going to go ahead and go over our vocabulary. We're working a little bit ahead. Hopefully, we'll get to single party state today. Maya, read it for us. Single party state, the Constitution of the country allows only the political party to come. Yeah, so we're going to talk about this really quick so that when we get to it, you know what it means. If you look over here, I've drawn you a couple visuals. If you look on the left, if you go into a voting booth in the United States, you might see something similar to this. You'll see the different parties, Republican, Democrat, the ones we're most familiar with, the Green Party, that's a smaller party, maybe an independent candidate. I know, spell that right. And you have a choice. Each of these represents a different platform, a different set of ideas. In a single party state, you might go into the voting booth and you will see candidate one, candidate two, candidate three. But just looking at the colors, what can you tell about what political party these candidates belong to? Lainey? Republican. Okay. Okay, they vote maybe, but they would all belong to the same party. So it looks like you have a choice, but do you really have a choice? No. no. If colors represent ideas, would this ballot represent different ideas? No. no, it would not. So in a single party state, that's what you're going to have, where you just have one political party. There may be elections. You may have different candidates, but you're basically voting for the same set of ideas. All right, our learning target today. Go ahead, Kylie. I can identify the characteristics of a three. Theocracy, that's what we're going to start uh, with. Theocracy and single party state. Okay. All right. First, we're going to review really quick the different governments that we've learned. Let's go back to monarchy. How do you become a monarch? Everybody should know. Yes? Um, it's inherited. It is inherited. What is an absolute monarch? Yes? It's when, like, um, it's like where you have decisions. Like, yes, you do have decisions. That's a good, that's fine. Only way Yes, very good. Yes, you do have decisions. You are running the entire country. What is a constitutional monarch, Madison? Um, the monarch has influence but not power. Right, influence. What does that mean? Influence but not power. What does that mean, Abby? You, you don't have power, like you don't make those decisions, but like people look up to you. Yeah, you are, you are the symbol of your country. Yes. Um, you can like give like suggestions yes you, you can't actually like make it a decision right you're absolutely correct you can you can make suggestions Queen Elizabeth she does meet with the Prime Minister from time to time and she gives her suggestions and her input but does she have the power to make the decisions for England no. she does not no all right a dictator how does a dictator take power um, Logan I cannot believe I lost your name for a minute they like take over the whole country they just Yes, they take it over by force, and usually who controls what in the country will usually uh, control the government. Yes? The army. Yes, whoever usually controls the military. Um, what type of monarchy is a dictatorship most like? Let's see if you can make a connection there. Absolutely. Yeah, very much, except one is by force and one is inherited. Absolutely. All right, now we're going to talk. We left off yesterday, and I was going to give you an example of a dictatorship. So we're going to go here to all the way over here to the um, eastern part of Asia and we're going to go to North Korea. Now this goes back to the Korea. We're going to talk a little bit about the Korean War because we have America has interest in Korea. The Korean War fought in the 1950s. Does anyone know why we fought the Korean War? Yes, give it a shot. I think, okay. Wasn't it because like uh, it was, wait, what date was it? 1950s. Wasn't it because, like, wasn't it when, like, Hitler... Nope, you're a little, you're a little too far back. Okay, at, without getting into a big history lesson, just a quick little <laughs> blurb on this. North Korea was a communist nation. It still is today. South Korea was a democratic nation. Our policy was to contain communism, not to let it spread, not to try to wipe it out, but just to keep it where it was and not let it overtake any more countries. North Korea tries to invade South Korea. So we, having the policy of containment, we fight with South Korea. Did we, were we successful? Yes, we were. Because today, North Korea is still communist. It did not ever take South Korea. South Korea is still a democratic nation. North Korea, great example of a dictatorship. Great example. In fact, a couple little examples of how the dictator works in, dictatorship works in North Korea. The dictator died last year. 
his son took over. His son was pretty young, like 27, 28 years old. They videotaped the funeral. They videotaped all of the people along the parade route. They watched the video, they meaning government officials. If you weren't crying enough, if you weren't sad enough, they looked you up and you were assigned to a work camp for a certain amount of time because you weren't mourning the dictator properly. Mm, think about that, that's pretty scary, isn't it? I just read this week, current, a little bit of current events for you, 80 people, it is reported that 80 people in North Korea were publicly executed because they were watching smuggled television shows from South Korea. So the government controls everything. They control what's on the television, what's on the radio. They control whatever anybody else outside of North Korea sees about North Korea. They control that. If you're a reporter, you go to North Korea, you have a government escort. They take you to the places they want you to go. You hear the answers to the questions they want you to hear. Uh, really, the people in North Korea, they don't know a lot about the outside world. There's no internet. They don't see TV uh, from outside their country or hear, hear radio. So that's how the dictator continues to stay in power because he keeps his people very isolated. Anybody have any questions about dictatorship? None? All right, go to theocracy. Everybody go to theocracy. Get your pencils ready because we're going to do our pencils first. Yes? You can read. You can read really loud, but can you start and stop a little bit? Can you do that? Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody got your pencil. Everybody ready? Okay, hurry up, Molly. Here we go. Wait till she's done. Come on, Molly. All right, go ahead, Maya. The theocracy is a government headed by religious leaders. In the ancient times, theocracies were common with government officials serving as religious leaders as well. There are a few theocracies in the world today. Okay, underline that very first sentence. There are, the theocracy is a government headed by religious leaders. Now, it's going to be hard to find one of those. However, there are countries that have theocracy-like tendencies. Did we talk about Saudi Arabia the other day? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. What type of government did we learn they had? What type of government does Saudi Arabia have? Maya, you remember? It's one we've already talked about today. Tatum, give it a shot. Monarchy? Yeah, they have an absolute monarchy. So the monarch, the absolute monarchy, it is not a theocracy. Religious leaders do not run it. However, it has theocracy-like tendencies. What does that mean? It means that the laws in the country follow the teachings of the Muslim faith. So while the religious leaders don't run the country, the laws do reflect the um, religious beliefs of the people. Yes? Does a monarchy always have to be like royals or can it be like? Yeah, monarchy and royalty the same. Okay. Yeah. When you hear royalty, you know that's, that's, that's a part of the monarchy. You're absolutely correct. Yeah, those words. Yes, everybody get your blue highlighters out. Everybody get your blue highlighters out. Okay, yes? Um, isn't Egypt right now a theocracy? Egypt right now is in flux. It's, it, it's, it was a dictatorship. They ousted their dictator. Then a group of extreme um, religious group took over. They ousted them. There's a new group in power. It is, it is the last three years, Egypt has kind of been on a roller coaster. So I'm not really sure anybody knows who's exactly in charge of, in Egypt. And we recently cut off our aid to Egypt. So we have, you know, we've, we're, you know, we have kind of an interesting relationship there. Uh, they had a dictator. He was ousted about three years ago. Mubarak was his name. And he was a bad guy, but he was our bad guy. What does that mean? He was not a good dictator, but he had good relations with the United States. So we really kind of let that slide that he was a dictator. And once he was ousted, what is our relationship with Egypt? It's really uncertain because the government there is uncertain. It's, it's changing. It could be different next week. Yeah, the government that replaced him was an, was an extreme Muslim group and the people in the country, uh, they, they cracked down on the people more than the dictator, so they are tried to get them out. And then of course there's always a power struggle when a country is looking for new leadership. So it's, it's really uncertain what's going to happen there. That's something that that's, could change daily, weekly. Is, this is kind of a question 
Mm-hmm. Are they, like, targeting us? Well, yes and no. We're, uh, that, that's, that's hard to say what they're actually doing because they're very, very secretive. Uh, back in the spring, there was the, the new dictator. Um, he was, he's very young. Like I said, he's, like, in his late 20s. He was making all kinds of big talk that he had all these military weapons and they were going to do all these rocket launches and all these demonstrations. And then he eventually just kind of settled down. Um, are they a threat to us? Any communist country that's not our ally is, should be considered a threat. Will they ever do anything? Do they, have, do they have the capability of ever attacking us? That I don't know. I don't know. Possible, but equally, you know, not possible. I'm, I'm, it's really hard to know. Yes. No. <laughs> no. We're not allies with them. Eighth grade AM course is to report to the course room. Eighth grade AM course to the course room. No, they they are not our allies. We do not really have we do not have um, relations uh, with them, political relations with them. We don't meet with them. We don't have treaties with them. We don't. We're not their allies. Yes. Who's, what did I say? Oh, Abby was reading. Abby, go ahead. Everybody get your blue markers. Go ahead. Having a government based on one set of religious beliefs has some advantages. A single state supported religion encourages political and social unity. It also ensures that leaders make their decisions in line with their citizens' values and beliefs. All right, raise your hand and tell me what were the advantages. And remember, it doesn't have to always be an advantage for the citizen. It can also be an advantage for the leader. What were the advantages of a theocracy? Yes? It says it also ensures that leaders make their decisions in line with the citizens' values and beliefs. Perfect. Everybody highlight that with your blue highlighter. Everybody highlight that. All right, is there another advantage there? Another advantage. Michael? Um, a single state supported religion encourages political and social unity. Yes, everybody highlight that. A single state supported religion encourages political unity. If, if everybody is a believer, it's very easy to create that unity. What does unity mean? Remember? Do you remember? That was a vocabulary word we had last week. Yes? Like um, together. Yes, oneness, togetherness. Very good. So there are some, if everyone has a similar religious belief, it can create a great unified nation. But everybody get your orange markers out. There's downside too. There's a downside too. Think about it. It's hard to make everybody a believer. Cameron? Um, I have one for the disadvantages. Oh, go ahead. Um, their rights can be abused. Okay, yeah, go ahead and read it for us. Though. We haven't read it yet. Go ahead and read it. Making sure everyone follows the te techniques of one religion can be quite difficult. However, citizens who do not believe in the religion of the majority can have their rights abused. Religious warfare can even break out between citizens and differing beliefs fighting for control of their government. All right, there's a lot of disadvantages there. What are some disadvantages? I'm going to let you go ahead and give yours since you spotted it out. Um, if you do not... If you don't believe in the um, religion that most of them believe in, your rights can be abused. Yep, that's the second line there. Everybody highlight that with your orange marker. Citizens who do not believe in the religion of the majority can have their rights abused. That is correct. Let's see, someone we haven't heard from. Sarah, we haven't heard from you. Um, religious warfare can break out. Yes, religious warfare. Absolutely. Great example right here, we have India and Pakistan. India is a Hindu nation, and while they are not a theocracy, they have theocracy-like tendencies. Just like Saudi Arabia, many of their laws are based on the Hindu faith. Pakistan, here to their northwest, used to be part of India. This area was primarily Muslim people. And we, saw, we see how this works out. Are, is Pakistan a region still part of India? Yeah. Jordan, what happened to it? Uh, they made a branch out. Yeah, they became their own country. Yes. Yeah, so we see what happened here. 
we had predominantly a Muslim population here in the northwest of what used to be India. Today, that is Pakistan. Yes? Okay, well, last year, we were A country that tried to become a state. Um, Puerto Rico? It was Cuba. Cuba. Then it tried to become a state. Cuba is a communist nation. They tried to become a state. Sure. Years and years ago. Can okay, you Puerto Rico? It was just like last year. Last year. That might have been Puerto Rico, I think you're thinking of. Um, I think you're thinking of Puerto Rico. All right. Are there any others in here that you can think of? Yes. Um, I was asking about the map. Yeah. Where, where India is, the orange spot. Right here, Bangladesh. Yeah. That's a country. Well, did it used to be part of India? Yes, I believe it did. Yes. yes. All right. Everybody ready? Everybody got this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go up here to our to our T chart. Somebody read. I want someone to volunteer. Read A. Kylie, we haven't heard anything from you today. A single state supporting religion encourage political and social unity. All right, is that an advantage or disadvantage? Where are you going to put that? Where are you going to put it, Austin? Um, yeah, advantage. You are going to put it under advantage. You are correct. Here we go. A single state supported religion encourages political and social unity. So if you can get everyone to go along with the religion of the country, it'll work out. Want to do the next one? Yeah. All right, let's do B. Citizens who do not believe in the religions of the majority can have their right to be used, and that would be a disadvantage. Yeah, that's a big one. Want to do the third one? Keep going. If we get ahead of you, that's okay. I'll leave it up here for just a minute. Go ahead. Religious warfare can break out between citizens of differing beliefs. Fighting for control of What do you think? <clears throat> advantage or disadvantage? Um, disadvantage. Okay, Let's see if I can get this thing going. I have to go back up here. Disadvantage, yes. That would be a disadvantage if you have different groups fighting. All right, Madison. D. Leaders make decisions in line with their citizens' moral values and beliefs. Advantage or disadvantage? Advantage. Okay, let's see. See if it'll take it. Yep. Yes. Why do you think it would be hard to have a true theocracy today in the modern world? Not everybody agrees with the same religion. Yeah, not everybody agrees with the same religion. That would be very, very difficult. You would, yeah, go ahead and do the next one, then we'll give everybody a second. Interference. Enforcing. Enforcing religion's unity can be difficult. I think it's disadvantageous. Yes. It can be difficult to make everybody. All right, and our crazy little symbols. Symbol one, does that represent the advantages or the disadvantages? Jordan, what do you think? Uh, symbol one represents advantage. How, tell us how. How does that, how do, why do you think? Because they're all sitting in a circle, uh, in a circle and all happy. Yeah, they, they all, yeah, it seems happy, very peaceful. How about symbol two, Jordan? Um, they're, they're like tugging on another person, I guess, like they're like two different religions. Kind of looks like they're disagreeing there, doesn't it? It feels bad for the person. Yeah, I feel like they're being pulled. What would the person in the middle be as well? Maybe the person who um, has a different belief. Or maybe just all of them have different beliefs. Just, just generally, to me, I see it just doesn't look like unity. Doesn't look like oneness. Ah, that's a good interpretation. Yeah, maybe that person doesn't is doesn't have a set 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 of religious beliefs, and they're they're you know they're trying to pull them either way. Could be, could very well be. All right, one I'm done. Two almost three. I'm way behind. Really quick. Let me see. Okay. All right, just a couple minutes. 
when you finish, I, you go back over, you can go to the next page. Single party state, our vocabulary word today. I already gave you a little bit of introduction into this and gave you a little visual on what that's going to look like in the voting booth. If you're already finished, go, go ahead to single party state and you can look over that, um, that section. Can I read that again? We'll see. I like to get different people. Dang it. Don't let everybody get a, have a chance. Oh, I know. All right, here's what we're going to do with um, single party state. We're going to read the first paragraph together, then I'm going to let you get with your partner right next to you. And you guys are going to read the next two paragraphs. You're going to take your blue and your orange marker and you together are going to read those two paragraphs and discuss what the advantages and disadvantages are. Then we'll come back together and do our T-chart. Okay, everybody understand what we're going to do? All right, who wants to read the first paragraph? Somebody we haven't heard from today. Oh. Sophia, we haven't heard anything from you today. Nice and loud. Get your pencils ready because we might underline a little bit here. Go ahead. In a single party state, the Constitution allows only one political party to govern. All right, take your pencil and underline that first sentence. That's really important. How many parties are there in a single party state? One. 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 Is there a vocabulary clue in there? Yeah. Single, yep. Think about a single, just one. All right, Sophia, go ahead. Power is exercised by the leading members of the party. These party members have more power to vote or challenge the others in the nation. The party members nominate candidates for public office and make most decisions for, their, for the country. All right, now we're going to find out what our, the advantages and disadvantages are. And if you think about it up here, you can even use this little visual. The left would be where you, each color represents a different party with a different set of ideas. Over here would be the ballot of a single party state. What's the problem here? It looks like you have a choice. You have three candidates, but if the colors represent different ideas, what's the problem with the single party state? There's not different parties like Republicans and Democrats. Are there different party ideas going on here? No. 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 So you might vote for a different candidate, but are you voting for a different set of ideas? No. No. It's what I like to call the illusion of choice. It looks like you have a choice, but do you really have a choice? No, you don't. Advantages and disadvantages, remember, it's not always about the citizen either. It could be advantages or disadvantages for the leadership. So what I'm going to do, Madison, go back there to your desk so I can get everybody organized here. Let's see, we're going to get with our partners. You two, you two, Jenny and Logan, you two. You two, you two, you two, you two, you two. Um, Michael and Mackenzie, you two. Laney, Tatum, and Riley. All right, you've got about... Uh, five minutes. Five minutes to read those last two paragraphs and highlight with blue and orange the advantages and disadvantages. You can scoot your desk together if you like. Um, multiple leaders. I want someone to really quick, quickly read the second paragraph. Just don't move your desk, just write where you are. Um, Tatum, I don't think we've heard from you today. Go ahead. The party you use utility comes at a cost, however. The views of the party members may be very different from the interests of the people as a whole. Wait, second paragraph. Oh. Move back. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You're good. Go, just go to the second one. Evidently, a single party system avoids bickering between different political parties. Those in it making, passing laws, and carrying out government processes easier. All right, what are some advantages that this paragraph mentioned of having a single party state where you have all of your candidates are from the same political party. What were some advantages? Logan? Um, a single party system avoids differing between different political parties. They're not going to be bickering. Why are these people on this ballot, why are they not going to be bickering? Why is that? Um, Adam? Because they're all going to be for the same party. They're all going to be for the same party. They all have the same views. We know our on this ballot, will these candidates be bickering? Yes. yes they're all going to represent different ideas. Absolutely. All right. Another advantage, Jenny? Uh, advantage or disadvantage? Advantage. If there's no bickering, what becomes very easy? Uh, their work. Their work, yeah. Passing laws and carrying out the government. It runs pretty smooth because you don't have any opposition. All right. Um, some advantages or disadvantages, uh, what are they? Savannah? Being a 
protests and also people with differing political views for a solution to problems that often completely shut out of the political process. So if you don't agree or you have a different political view, are you going to be involved in the process of the, pol of the government? No, you're going to be kind of shut out of that. Absolutely, that would be a very big disadvantage. So not let anybody else's ideas, and they might have a really good idea, but you never know, because if they're not in this single party, the Constitution isn't going to allow them to uh, share their ideas. All right, we have to go for midterm. So what I want everyone to do is close your um, notebooks. Put your markers in the bin on the way out, and we'll pick up here when we uh, come back tomorrow.